You're watching Hellbent Holler live, part of the Hellbent Media Network. Grab a drink, settle in, and get ready for the show. All right, there we go. Sorry, we had to had to play out the end of that there. All righty, welcome to Helmet Holler Alive. My name is Jesse. This is Joe. Let us know that you can see us and that you can hear us, and we will get started with the show. Just throw that. Just just says loud and clear. Perfect. Welcome everyone. Um, we are so glad to have you here today. Welcome to our Monday Night Alive show. If you're new here. We do this every Monday at 7.30 Eastern time, and it is a free-form kind of discussion. We let the chat kind of take it's it. It's a damn it's debacle is what it is. It's a debacle. It's a debacle. We're going to let the chat kind of take it, uh, let the viewers and everybody that's involved here kind of take the reins on everything and decide the direction that we go in. Um, but we do sometimes have topical things that we talk about, so we'll discuss some stuff. Um, some recent stuff, and then we'll uh, turn it over to the members and the viewers and see what happens, what transpires. So, <clears throat> it is Monday. Had a little eclipse today. We had a little eclipse today. Um, we didn't have any totality here. It was 81.3% here. Pretty underwhelming. Very underwhelming. Uh, we had totality. That is Oh, I need to change that graphic. Look, I have like splatter all over my head for this thing. Let's go over here. How's that? Okay. All right. <laughs> um, you know, in 2017, when we had that eclipse, we had totality where we were. We were right in the path of it. And there were so many people in town. It was bananas, which is my new word. <laughs> Jesse has use. been saying bananas like 10 times a freaking like hour, not Everything even a day. Everything is bananas. She Everything. said it the other day when we were, and I just went, what the hell's up with you and bananas? When did this start? I'm you on know? a banana kick. She's it's, on a banana kick. So. It's all about the potassium, baby. But um, yeah, it was insanely busy around here in 2017 when we had the total eclipse and like everybody was hyping it up like crazy. They're mm -hmm. like, oh my God, they had all these theories about what was going to happen. Um, oh, this is so rare. This never happens. My God. And then it's like now, oh yeah, we've got another one. Here's yeah. another one, but it's going in this part of the country. So um, I'm glad to see you guys are here. Um, we, we were going to do the show even if the rapture had happened because we figured we'd still have an audience. We were you know just planning. We yeah. planned that we were still like, be hey, all the usual suspects will be here anyway. It's going, <laughs> going. Did you guys notice how light traffic was today? So, <laughs> oh, this happened again. Uh oh. All right. Yeah. We've just, I hate these microphones with we're a gonna, passion. We're going we're gonna to change. I hate them. So, so we're going to have to, we're going to have to completely redo how we do this. 
my God. How did this happen? I don't know. I just sit here quietly and it just happens. <laughs> Jesus Christ. So, um, just here. You may just hold it for two hours. Hold, up, hold the microphone out. And I just do that. There, there you go. <laughs> Are you serious? I'm I have being to hold serious this? right now because oh. I need this down here to fix it. So, all right. I don't well, I know how this broke. So, <laughs> this is the most awkward thing I've ever seen here. Um, I'll talk about the eclipse about that. Uh, all of you people that were in the area of totality, was it insane around where you were? Did you have a huge influx of people? Um, were your resources taxed? Um, I know they were planning on all of this stuff happening. Jesus Christ. This is bananas. This is bananas. All right. This is the last weekend for these mics. I'm done with these. I'm going to throw them. Mics after this, I'm going to so. throw them, throw them at the cat. That's what's going to happen. <laughs> All right. Welcome back. Uh, Every show is just a damn struggle. <laughs> Every show is a struggle, whether it's a Monday night live streams, whether it's a live stream from the field, whether it's just us out doing an investigation, just filming it. It's just a damn struggle. We met this cool dude this past weekend um, who does like a lot of filming for like music stuff like bands and stuff like that like some of the biggest bands in the world he's like done like just filming a photography hey, like he he did like dvds for metallica, metallica for like youtube all sorts of crazy stuff yeah and we're just talking to him and i'm just going we just do all run and gun and he just went oh and i'm like yeah it's just a constant fight with everything man so yeah Anyway. Cowboy forty five seventy two said it's a fairy folk that did. Hey, you know what it wouldn't freaking surprise me at That's this point a, man all yeah. right that's a that's what we'll just say. Um, Seven Systems said, "I was to understand the apocalypse would be happening today." Yeah, my mom's friend. <clears throat> um, I talked to my mom during our part of the eclipse, three oh eight p.m. I was talking to my mom, and uh, she goes, "Well, Debbie said she won't go out of the house when it's happening because that's when the porthole will open the up. The porthole will open up." So. <laughs> So I know that CERN was supposed to fire up today. That was supposed they to They were happen. supposed to shoot missiles at like, I don't know, the sun, um, all sorts of stuff. That's just a, a generic Monday. Love the t-shirt. Yeah, man. The void is like my, one of my favorite, like, it's weird because as we started doing this stuff and we started to experience weird stuff in the woods, it sounds so crazy to say, but experience weird stuff in the woods and especially North Georgia with like the human aspect of it and everything like that stuff that I had previously like been familiar with, but didn't pay any attention to. I all of a sudden started to have a newfound appreciation for one of those things is the void, <laughs> so, yeah. you know? So now it's like, I won't, I won't say it's like one of my favorite movies cause it's, <laughs> excuse me, but <clears throat> it's, we just like it strikes home for us. So yeah, just like True Detective, it really struck a chord with us. Yeah. I think it's that um, that horrific, otherworldly um, possibility that's out there. I think that's what really strikes a chord with us. That yeah. there is possibly another reality. There's like a parallel reality that is just horrors beyond any belief, you know, or anything you could ever imagine. I think that's something that really strikes a chord with us. Because the more that we do this paranormal research and this cryptid research and these field expeditions and look into this and make these connections between our world and whatever else lies in another dimension, possibly, it just gets weirder and weirder and darker. And I think the process of people possibly doing things such as rituals to open up that door Cern, like, or to scratch on that wall. You know, I think that's what really interests us as well. Right. Show has void rage. So sorry. Just to throw that up there. Um, <clears throat> yeah. It's just, you know, it's, it, there was a lot in this area because it was such a big deal last time, the, the eclipse that I think people, they, they heard people say it wasn't going to be as extreme, but I think deep down inside, they were thinking, oh, this is going to be awesome again. And then it was just a bunch of just people who were very underwhelmed, very just bored with the whole thing. Um, I walked outside with some glasses on, took a look at it and went, eh, walked back inside. So um, I wonder what glasses you had because Chad... <clears throat> 
Wolf Schledgesteiner Hausenbergdorf said that there was a, re a recall on some on of his eclipse glasses. glasses. I probably got a bad pair. I have noticed that I've had. It's like Chinese I've, eclipse glasses. I've had an ever growing, you know, hunger for human flesh that I think soon will not be able to be denied. So I got that going for me. So that started out earlier this week. Yeah, exactly. Week, so. I can't blame that on the exactly. eclipse. So. <laughs> Anyway, um, Brandon Ulet says, Evening Hellbender Rapture survivors. survivors. We were going to start uh, the show and with... have like halos and fake wings on and like have like <laughs> cotton on the wall here behind us and just be like, Evening Heathens, we're doing the show from heaven for all to all of you folks down there, all you peons down there. <laughs> the budget cuts wouldn't allow, and, yeah, the budget <laughs> cuts wouldn't allow. And no, no money in the budget for that. For that, for that heaven there. set. <laughs> uh, ba, ba, ba. Jeff Rawls. Hey, what is the name of the video coming out on LBL by Small Town Monsters? Um, Alex Petikoff already released his on YouTube. Um, that was uh, his debut of Strange Places, his new series that he's mm -hmm. doing on Weird Places. Um, Strange Places, uh, episode one. And then the other one is called, um, it's the second... Uh, Dogman Triangle. Yes, um, but it is going to be the companion film to Aaron Deese's second book on Dogman uh -huh. Hunting Grounds. Um, so it's going to kind of center around his book and it's going to be, because he did the book, The Texas Dogman Triangle. I just drew a complete blank on it and I looked they, at it earlier because Aaron posted something about it. So. They did the companion film for that as well. So they're doing the same thing with um, Hunting Grounds. For hunting the, grounds, yes. Dogmen of the hunting grounds, dogmen of the lakes. Is I was what like, literally, called. what have I just been saying? But there was a second part to it that you know. So hunting grounds, dogmen of the lakes. Dogmen of the lakes. Yes. Um, so there's going to be a, it, that book is already out. Nope, that book's not out. Yet. I thought it was already out. No, you the book order. comes out now. You can do pre-orders on it. This is just I'm. This is what happens when you spend all of your free time in the mountains and in the woods. You're just completely lost on like regular it. society. <laughs> we're not um, doing well. Yeah. <laughs> But it uh, they're not doing a good job. So they're doing uh, they're doing pre-orders for it right now. It starts starts tomorrow. So we are in both the book and that was a long way to answer that question. That was a long way to answer that question. Is anybody still here? Um, we are in the book a bit, um, and I don't know what will be as far as like in the documentary. Uh, you know how this goes. You always hear about people having like big roles and like. When they're shooting the movie and then it all ends up on the cutting room floor, you know, so we will see. That was supposed to be out in spring. Uh, so I guess it's going to be late spring, early summer that that will be coming out. Yeah, I think it's I think that's going to finalize out in what, May or something like that. So anyway. Going down a line. Let's see what else we got here. Oh, uh, we released a video last week. Uh on Tuesday, we did have a live chat with our members, but um, for non-members, uh, this will be the first time we've all been together since we released that video. So if anybody's got anything on that, um, we changed the title with that a little bit. So yeah. it's we're it's it's crazy because the YouTube algorithm is always such a weird thing to like kind of like fight, um, and you. We used to do kind of real weird esoteric titles, you know what I'm saying, you know, break booms and howls, you know, we have one just called a burning light. Yeah, was... burning light, you know, the black circle, stuff like that. And Path then, to darkness. That whole series was, was like just all weird titles. Yeah. Really weird titles. And and everybody was going, you guys need to simplify your titles. You can still have that, but as far as like the description of YouTube, um, you know, you need to just you need to I don't want to say lowest common denominator, but mm -hmm. it's lowest common denominator for YouTube. That's what it is. That's there's a reason why you see everybody making those faces and then the red circles and all that stuff. It's the because arrows. you have to do that to just to get any ground like on to, YouTube. Yeah. So, but we don't want to be like really cheesy clickbaity, you know what I'm saying? But we want, you know, obviously we want people to see our stuff. We're putting it out, you know, for public consumption. So um if you see the titles kind of switching around, we're trying to find a happy medium. We're trying, we don't want to be like real goofy or goofier than we are, but we also want to make it so that we, you know, some people see our stuff at least. Cause we even had like subscribers go, when did you guys release that? I never saw that. You know, it never came up for me. And we were like, all right, we've got to play by YouTube's rules a little bit. If we mm -hmm. want to, 
if we want even the people who want to see our stuff to be able to find it. So, so anyway, but we released that video where we were in that pine swamp and where I <laughs> went knee deep into a hole in the ground and nearly broke my damn leg. And so. you, you took a tumble into like a root system situation, but you just went straight down into well, it. What yeah. happened, we were going to like the lake where we found those small footprints at. Yeah. And we had, and if you hear us in the video, we're like going. <sighs> Cause we just, were hauling. We were hauling down there. And we got a ton of weight, like a ton of equipment on us. And we're also wearing raincoats at that point. So we're like overheating and. Um, we got there and I'm trying to get down to the shoreline and I take a step on what I thought was solid ground, but it was like some exposed roots where a tree had gone down sideways and the, just the leaf and the forest stuff and everything like that leaves had just kind of covered it. So it looked like solid ground. My foot goes in between two roots that separate to let my foot go through and then they just slam back shut so i'm in like this wooden bear trap with like my foot and, I'm, and of course i'm up the hill and i, I don't want her to come him. to me because i don't know how steady the ground is there so i don't need both of us stuff i wouldn't so. be bad if i was like trying to come behind you and all you see is me <laughs> running behind you and then just poof because as small <laughs> as you are you just like disappear down to your like eyes for god's sake so um but anyway so we've got that out so if you have not had a chance to watch it yet give it a give it a little a look. lot of stuff happens in that video we start out in the pine swamp that we actually got lost in um so this video we actually filmed this video before we did that video we were out there at night mm -hmm. um and we went to a different area for this and we kind of got lost in it the first time then we went back to a different area in the pine swamp because the pine swamp area is huge and we got totally lost in that hunting Bigfoot at night video. Totally lost for that. Um, but there's just. And keep in mind that area, like we keep harping homes, not huge. It's not like, you yeah. know, like a national forest. So people were going, you needed to get your compasses. We have compasses in our backpack. There's like a backup measure. And we use them during the night investigation. But it's just that it's not really, you know, it, at the same token, it was weird getting turned around. But at no point were they going to like. Were we going to be lost in there for like three weeks, you know, I'm saying stumble out. I and mean, I think I had too much uh, confidence in my ability to actually navigate like, oh, OK, I know that we came in. Everything here. looks the same. back. There, I was like, so. OK, we came in here. So we know that this road borders it here. Another road borders it that direction. So I think that was maybe what I was thinking. And then we got totally turned around as usual mm -hmm. with that. But that was kind of a weird I think that video that we put out on Tuesday was a good way for you guys to kind of see some of the i almost had a title that alluded to the trials and tribulations <laughs> of doing this kind of work when you go out in the field and you do field investigations that it's not easy um we edit around a lot of the stuff with the frustrating parts um i i edit around a lot of that a lot of the arguments a, a lot, lot of the meltdowns the meltdowns <laughs> uh losing stuff getting lost um just stuff like that but i decided in the last couple of uh, episodes that i've put out videos that i've put out that i'm going to kind of start showing some of the some of the the scars on this stuff you know Damn. some of the some of the difficulties that are involved in doing field research because it's not easy it's very very time consuming it's not easy but it's well worth it we love doing it despite what strange difficulties we may have we still love doing it um you know with this one we encountered just a freak rainstorm that was coming in and mm -hmm. it was going to get really bad we actually got a flood warning um, we had a flood warning come through. So we were trying to, that's why we were running so hard to get to that shoreline to go and see if, if there were any prints on that shoreline again, because we had to get in there, get to the shoreline and then haul butt to get out of there before that bad rainstorm came in and flooded the area. And it had some pretty severe flash flooding through there. There's one spot where we hike across this pretty deep, um, it's technically a creek, but it's low line and there's no other way for us to get to the other side than going this way. But when it rains, you can see it becomes like a deluge comes down out of the mountain, out of the mountains and just comes straight through that area. So if we get trapped in there behind that, we're not going to be able to get to our vehicle. No. Um, so with that 
flooding coming. I was concerned about that. So we kind of had to halt but to get in there. So it was really scary when you I almost said decided to fall through the hole. Why do you decide well, to do something? Richard thing? Cox had said, make sure to have the blooper reel available. And I'm like, pretty much every damn show is a blooper reel at this My point. My life is a blooper My reel. My life is a blooper um, reel. And then Kim Drescher said the same thing, that she didn't think I was getting out of there. I knew I was going to get out of there. Um, I didn't want to have to lose my boot doing it. Yeah. And because we I had was, a really long hike out of there. Yeah, and because I couldn't, my foot wasn't touching the bottom. So when I realized what happened, we're on a, we're next to an embankment and I'm going, this could go straight down to like the shorelines because this could be like a, like a eight, 10 foot drop down in. So if I let my boot go, I ain't getting my boot back. So, and then I'm looking at it when I'm trying to like separate the roots and I'm going, all right, I'm gonna have to get a saw. I've got my multi-tool with me. Saw your leg off? Saw, just take it right <laughs> off of the knee. Try God. to get, try to get through the roots at least. That escalated. So, but it, um, yeah, it's fine. Like I said, it's just that it, it kind of shows you that it's, even if you don't run into anything like strange, um, and people are always just like, you need to move slowly through the woods. I, I understand that. I understand that concept. Um, I would love to be able to do that all the time, but sometimes circumstances require us to like hustle and like kind of move quickly. Um, and in that case, you accept the risk that you're taking. Mm -hmm. And if I'd broken my leg, it would have been anybody's damn fault of my own. But we wanted to get to that shoreline before the rain came in to see if we could find prints. And then we busted tail down there and there's no prints. The water was too high from the previous rain we had. So... But, you know, there you go. <laughs> that tree was all feed me, Seymour. <clears throat> yeah. So. Yeah, and my concern was if you if we were put behind too far, uh, we'd be trapped in there. Yeah. We'd be screwed. Yeah. So it was like we had to get we had to get your leg out of there. And then we had to get down to the shoreline and get mm -hmm. our business done and then get out of there and then hike the hike out. So um, we didn't really have time for your shenanigans okay yeah and you know a boy quartz is on here he says the pine swamp is the kind of foliage train that i hate when researching because it blocks visibility and makes me claustrophobic there everything just looks the same there's no there's no landmarks there's no nothing there's no there's no points that you can pick out and people are going well you know you should blaze your trail cut you know cut bark off the backs of the trees and we understand that concept um a Call me weird and maybe like a little bit of a hippie. I don't like chopping on trees unless it's absolutely necessary. Yeah. I'm and then the other thing too is, is that we're not going in a straight line a lot of times. We're going, we're following sounds. We're going, hey, let's go over there. And we're there. also trying to move at a clip sometimes. We're trying mm -hmm. to move through yeah. an area pretty quickly um, and kind of turn on a dime. Like if yeah. we hear something and we need to move in that direction, it's going to be like, hang on. Every third tree, let me do it. Well, not to mention that we're we're zigzagging and we're going in yeah. just we're not going in a straight line. So all of a sudden that sort of stuff becomes of limited use because you're not traveling in a linear fashion or just maybe just one curve. I mean, it's it's all over the damn place. We're so all over the damn place. It's just a matter of, I guess, just we just have to adapt to what we're dealing with mm -hmm. and just deal with it. Yeah. You know. Um, like you said before, it's not like we're gonna be lost in there for a month. But you know, yeah. um, but it's it is unnerving. It does like, it's kind of unsettling, but you're like, okay, you'll be okay. You'll get out of here. Um, you're going to get out of here a lot later than you thought. Yeah. But you're not going to be trapped in here. And what's crazy is, is people are talking about they're lucky that I didn't break my leg. Um, the other thing too is, is that I was pretty freaking proud of myself on, because I set the camera down and I was like, I might as well get this footage because I didn't think I was like in danger. I, I didn't think I'd hurt myself. I mean, I jarred when I hit Dan because when I started going down, I just, I realized kind of what was happening instantaneously. I don't know how I realized it. So I just wrote it down. I made sure that my leg went straight down in and I didn't go to either side, which meant that I hit pretty hard. But at the same token, I was sitting there going, I don't think anything's broken. Um, so I'm not going to flip out. So I was like, I might as well just film this. So when I set the GoPro down, I didn't know if I was getting anything. And then I was like, it's not a bad job. I got it framed pretty well. So pretty damn good cameraman doing a hell of a good job here. So, <laughs> um, Michael Trevor's toe I'm sorry, not Trevor. <laughs> um, enjoyed the episode and liked how you showed the true field research. Yeah. That's, I kind of, I don't know. I've been kind of wanting to go in that direction too with yeah. some of this. We, we, We've been doing this for six, five, six years, six years now. Yeah, something like that. Yeah. We've been doing this for a while now. And 
uh, you know, when I would edit stuff down before, I would kind of take out some of that stuff. And I don't know if that's kind of, honestly, I don't know if that was part of uh, an ego protection thing that it's kind of embarrassing. Well, we didn't we think also people wanted to see how problems. the sausage was made. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, um, but the more yeah. that we do this and the more that we kind of just keep going and I, I think, I think we have more respect for what we do. Yeah. You know? And, and the I, other thing too is, is that you guys get to see kind of the, the, again, how the sausage is made. Do you know what I'm saying? So, you know, trying to keep stuff charged in the field, you know, um, there's all, when you guys see like something on TV, like expedition Bigfoot or something like that, there's like a crew there with a man. And if they need a thermal imager, they're not pulling that out of their freaking pack. Somebody's giving them the thermal imager that they had. So with us, we've got stuff buried in our packs, or maybe we didn't decide to bring it this time because space is limited. Um, battery chargers are like heavy as hell and we've got to constantly try to keep stuff charged in the field and regular times and then even just simple tasks like keeping the cable into the charger yeah. in your backpack and there's a lot of problem solving that goes along with this yeah a lot of and, trial and we're error constantly refining it. it and it's you know and then you get into an area where all of a sudden you start having weird equipment malfunctions and that's just a whole nother layer of difficulty for it so mm -hmm. um and it's weird because, you know, the armchair quarterback stuff is so bad, too. So and, and no matter what you do, if you're going, hey, we do this all the time, but it's difficult. It's hard. You know, look at these idiots. They didn't, you know, blah, 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 blah. You know, and I'm going, yeah, man, we're we've been out here for like two days. Yeah. Our batteries are running out. We're constantly let's instead get of um, doing a great job. It's doing my best, <laughs> doing my best. I mean, we're trying to we try to get a battery charged enough to keep filming because we want to have the ability to film all the time because we've lost good stuff because we have we're, all the batteries were dead, you know. So now we're constantly going. All right, I've got enough bat charge on this battery. Let me go ahead and put this on, put the other one on the charger. Um, that stuff doesn't make it to the videos. And that's a big chunk of it, you know, just keeping the stuff running. And again, other people are like, well, you know, if you left all that equipment at home, you'd have more of a chance to have a, an encounter. And I'm going, great, just another, we could just sit here and tell you the stuff that happened without showing you what happened. And that's the whole goal for this is to kind of go, I mean, the whole 99% of this field is stories and fake AI clips under 30 seconds long or fake AI images. Mm -hmm. We're trying to show you the full saga of what happened. So if we do catch something, you have context for it. You know, it's just not a standalone, isolated 15 second clip on TikTok. It's the whole thing that happened from start to finish there. And that means we have to film and record it, the whole thing from start to finish. And that's, that's rough, man. With just two people, you know, and we're trying to pay attention to ourselves and we're trying to navigate through the woods, you know. I've got some stuff started. You want to start going Cynthia, thank, thank you, you for that. Cynthia, Cynthia, yes. Cynthia, for that. Cynthia, thank you so much for that. Um, <clears throat> Paul wants to know, NASA wanted people to pay attention to their pets. How did your cats act? How did our cats act, Jesse? I so all right. So when the eclipse occurred, um, I was on the phone with my mom and <laughs> I grabbed a bunch of crystals and <laughs> special blue rocks. Um, mm -hmm. I grabbed a bunch of crystals and went outside and put them on the back driveway. And I sat out there and I had my outside cat in my lap and he was fine. He was doing good. So then everything was normal and perfectly fine. And so then after it was kind of over, I was like, all right, this is enough. I got stuff to do. I had to run some errands today. So I was like, I got to go inside and uh, get dressed and go run my errands. I have all my stuff in my arms. I come in the house and my cat Cobra just attacked me, like latched onto my leg. And she she's mean and she's terrible, but she doesn't normally do this. I mean, she latched onto my leg and I had to fling her off of me across the room. So Cobra is apparently affected by the eclipse. She's mm -hmm. the devil has been unleashed yeah. um, in Cobra from the eclipse. Yeah, she was uh, she was just like Cobra attacked me. Um, LW, our boy LW wants to know, have y'all traveled through Tennessee? Have you stopped and smoking about knife works? Yes. Um, do you yeah. recommend them? Um, here's the thing with knives like that is that unfortunately a lot of, especially if you're looking for like brand name manufactured knives, there's a lot of knockoffs and counterfeits and fakes out there with those logos on there. Yeah. And you hear about people who order them from less expensive places like eBay and Amazon getting a, a fake one, you know? Mm -hmm. So Smoky Mountain, at least, you know, Smoky Mountain Knife Works. Um, what is the one where the blade 
Blade HQ, you know, and uh, like regular Nightworks, all those places. They're a little higher. They're a little bit more expensive. But, but you know you're getting an authentic product. You know you're getting the authentic product. Um, and... Going to Smoky Mountain Knifeworks itself is an experience. They have a really, really fantastic collection of taxidermy. Um, it is the world's largest knife store. So it's a destination within itself. So if you're ever passing through there, I do highly recommend that you go and stop in there. Um, you're also able to actually pick up and handle knives that normally you wouldn't get to see in person. Um, we we buy a lot of knives. Joe and mm -hmm. I buy a lot of knives. And there's knives that we'll look at, they'll come out, and we'll be like, I don't know. I really like how that looks. But, you know, you don't want to spend $300 on something that you don't know how it feels in the hand. A knife is a very, very personal thing. It has to fit your hand and feel comfortable. Uh, the weight has to feel comfortable for you. It has to be something you can use and you can manipulate easily. So it, it's difficult to just buy knives sight unseen. And, and even, knife stores are very rare nowadays. Yeah, and even two of the same model knife might feel different yeah. in your hand for some reason. Mm -hmm. Even if on paper they've got all the same specs, they do. So. There's a couple of microtechs that some of them, even if it's the same model, I can't deploy it. Yeah. But then another one I can deploy. So it's it's a very personal thing. So it's great to just stop in there and kind of see things in person and see what they have. And just take a look at all the amazing taxidermy. Um, they have the African Big Five um, animals. So you can actually see taxidermy of all these. White buffalo. You can see all kinds of amazing taxidermy in there. They have a polar bear. We're display. big fans. We've, we've dropped some coin in there before. Because yeah. sometimes I'll go in. And here's the other thing, too, is that sometimes... I know people use it as like a, you know, kind of a showroom for Amazon. They go in and look at the knives and they just order them online. Generally, if I go in and I see something I want, I'm willing to pay a little bit more just because A, I know I'm getting the real deal and B, it's helping support them. Yeah. So that way they're there for the next time when I go back. You always support what you enjoy and we enjoy going to Smoky Mountain Knifeworks. Sure. So sometimes I'll see something that I want and go, eh, I'll hold off till we go through Smoky Mountains just to kind of show them some support. And we like to, and they, now downstairs, they do have the relic room. I, I can talk about Smoky Mountain Knife Works forever. Yeah, um, I'll just do a Smoky Mountain Knife Works show. <laughs> downstairs, then, so. they have the relic room. So they have all kinds of cool, like antiques and coins and little odds and ends. Um, but they also, if you are a rock freak like myself a little geo nut uh you would love it down there they have like all kinds they have they have they have gemstones rocks and minerals that range in price from two dollars to ten thousand dollars twenty thousand dollar pieces so it's really cool to just go and check it out make sure you pencil in time to go and see everything but um I'm a big fan. I yeah. always buy, we tend to buy a knife, a knife and a rock every time we go there. So um, it is always a good time. So we stopped doing knife check just because we went through that unpleasantness with that lunatic. Um, and we were advised to not be flashing weapons on our live streams in case that came about. But yeah, I will show my birthday knife. That Jesse oh, Joe's got me. birthday is Saturday. My birthday is Saturday. Jesse got me my birthday knife. It is a cold steel five max. It is a freaking tank. It has got a five inch blade. I don't even know how overall long the whole damn thing is. It's freaking, it's insane. It's absolutely nuts. You guys are going to be seeing this in my pocket. A lot of times, I mean, I'm, I like having a big hunk of steel with me, even though we carry firearms. There's just something comforting about having like a big knife with you. Um, it kind of goes back to your caveman brain, maybe, you know, uh, but you're all caveman. A lot of right? times we can't, I can't wear a belt knife because I've got a backpack belt and I'm carrying a lot of weight on this backpack. So big folders are like right up my alley or those Bowies on those slings that I'll carry sometimes that you'll see. But that's my birthday knife. Thank you for that, by the way, Curtis. We greatly appreciate it. Real quick, let me get that out of the way. Curtis was kind enough to throw 20 bucks thank our you, way. Curtis. Tracy Crane, thank you so much, Tracy. We greatly appreciate all your support every week. I've just been on here babbling about Smoky Mountain. Smoky Mountain Knife Works, and they're going, give this girl some money for knives, for God's sakes. And our boy Ray, thank you for that, Ray. Thank you. Um, we greatly appreciate it, guys. We greatly appreciate it. Um, got... um, I also want to welcome Lisa Marie. Um, she's a new member to the channel. Thank you very much for joining the Hellbenders. Um, becoming a member supports the whole project supports what we do. It allows us to actually um, go out and continue this research and bring you guys um, all of the stuff that we do. Mm -hmm. And it's able, it makes us 
able to buy new equipment, <laughs> number one, um, as our stuff ages out as it is right now. Some of it is, but you also get extra videos. You get behind the scenes stuff. Um, coming up, we will be doing an experiment in the Grove. We have four experiments planned for the Grove yep. that are going to be live streamed if we get signal to the members at that point. Yep. Um, cause we're going to so. kind of get weird with some of the stuff. We've decided to make the Grove sort of our outdoor lab, um, outdoor paranormal lab. And, uh, so we're going to kind of get weird with it. So we're going to live stream those experiments to our members coming up. We've got one planned very soon. We'll announce that to our members when that comes up, but it's going to be awesome. Happy birthday, Julie B. I, there's so many people who's like born like this month, like around these like few weeks, but Anyway, all right, so we got a ton of more stuff here. Thank you to everybody who just did the super chat, super stickers, that all of that thing. show. Um, go through some of this other stuff here. Um, da, 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 da. Richard Cox, just to what we had done earlier, there's no way to blaze a trail on that kind of terrain, especially when you're going just all over the darn place, man. I mean, it's just, it's, it's all you would turn around and see is, is you'd go, okay, there's seven trees that were blazed let me see if it's this one no let me see if it's this one so it's just not it's just not it's not doable in that terrain i appreciate people trying to give us some feedback to try to like help us out there but that's just not doable in that point um and hawks the exact same way the goal of going in an area is leave it just like when you entered if we were out and it was something that was going to be we carry a lot of redundant stuff we carry two gps's the main one being that Garmin 64 ST. We have GPS watches that we run that we can like use to find our way back out. So it's four GPSs, two compasses. Um, and it's if we needed to, I would, but it's not going to do any good. So I don't want to cut on a bunch of trees. And again, if that makes me a tree hugging hippie, that makes me a tree hugging hippie. But there we go. Um, I've never heard you refer to yourself as a hippie. Tree hugging hippie. So. Um, Stingray had asked, where do those holes come from? In the pine swamp, we think it's where trees have burned down or maybe even fallen down and rotted because the holes, some of them don't look completely regular, like perfect circles, basically. Not like the ones we found in North Georgia, mm -hmm. that something made those holes. In North Georgia here, I don't know what I just, that's what we assume. They look natural. There's just a ton of them in there. So that kind of adds to the danger level. Somebody has... A few people have hypothesized that going, well, you know, if something was in there hunting deer, drive the deer into these areas with the big holes, it would more than likely take a deer down. And I'm going, it nearly takes us down. So I think that's a good, a possible, it's a good theory. Can't prove it. I had some doubts about that for a while, but now I'm kind of like, yeah, that's the thing, same thing with like the structures, like the tree structure stuff. We yeah. really paid no attention to it. And now we're seeing some patterns emerge, especially in wow. North Georgia when it comes to we don't know what meaning to ascribe to this because I don't think we have the ability to do that or will we ever have that ability. But uh, all we can do is kind of notice things, notice these patterns and maybe make note of them and see if we can draw any conclusions off mm -hmm. whatever changes as a result of these patterns. And if you've seen um, Alex Petikov's LBL video, um, the guy named Mike that's in there, I don't know if he shared his last name, so I'm not going to put his last name out there. But he was the, the guy that was local to the LBL that they spoke to in there quite a bit. Um, and I was talking to him earlier today and he was just going, I see that you have begrudgingly started to accept some of this tree stuff. And I'm like, you've got to, I mean, some of this stuff you're just seeing and it's just, there's, you see some weird stuff like tree structures and the way they fell and sticks and everything like that. And you're just going, that looks very compelling, but at the same token, it could very well just be natural. It's just the way it fell. Um, and then, but the other ones that you see, and it's just over and over and over again, and it's repeated the same thing over and over and over again, and it's in your face. You finally have to go, I know what I've said about tree structures, and I think that they're still overblown a bit. Not every weird thing you see in the woods is the result of Sasquatch or something else strange, mm -hmm. but at the same token, you can't throw the baby out in the bathwater. Some of them are real. And that's become very apparent to me as we've experienced more and more in some of these areas. I look at it and I go, I, you know, maybe I can say that's natural, but I can't say that one, that one, that one, and that one is natural. Just repeat it over and over and over again. Something's going on here. So, <clears throat> um, JD Smooth asks, so on average, how many batteries do you carry? We carry redundant batteries for everything. Not everything runs off the same batteries, unfortunately. 
So we have to carry backup headlamp batteries, backup flashlight batteries. Um, I have to carry multiple camera batteries. And then we carry, I don't have any in here to show you, but we carry just multiple battery chargers um, of varying sizes and power. That way I can kind of charge some of this stuff on the go. Like Jesse said, sometimes we have to make sure the cables are attached. Our usual MO is, is we'll rubber man stuff into the charger, put it back in the backpack to let it charge and then just keep going. Yeah. Um, if we go out with like a full loadout um, and we've got just everything and we've got a base of operations where our stuff's secure, so we don't have to worry about anybody like, you know, stumbling across our camp and taking it or something else coming in and wrecking our camp. Um, we could probably stay out. I'd say about 10 days right now and keep everything powered. And I mean, we got we got a lot right now. We got a lot. I mean, yeah, we could. I mean, yeah. If, of course, if we took our little cart out there, we could probably stay out a little longer. Yeah, but I'm just yeah. saying if we had, let's say if we were working out of the truck, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. We had the truck set up as a as a base of operations. We could keep everything locked up in there so we could just take everything. Yeah. We could probably keep going for 10, 10 days, maybe even 10 days without coming back in and still film, keep stuff charged up, keep everything going. Um, we could even take a laptop and do like data dumps out in the field to keep the SD cards going. Um, we're going to add in a bunch of SD cards to kind of, because we got some stuff planned where we're going to need to film a lot of footage for it. So. Yeah, I get, to, I get to start filming for my my uh, my first big doc. First big uh, documentary, yeah. man. So I'm excited. Boy, Hawk, do you use one of those harnesses that holds the camera? Nope. <clears throat> we do yeah. all run and gun stuff, man. I put it on a, I finally got a good recommendation for a tripod. I used to just hold the camera. You know, just in my hand, and if Our, we need it, so st station I put it on a rock or something. You know, so actually, we we really came up with that initial setup where we, we went with a tripod from mm -hmm. Les Stroud. Remember, that's what he was. Yeah, doing. but then we couldn't find a good tripod that worked. Mm -hmm. So then, uh, actually, Alex Petikoff, Small Town Monsters, recommended the type of because we always trade. We get a lot of like one-sided requests for information from other channels and other researchers and stuff like that, and that's. That's my pet peeve. You'll hear me kind of going about is when somebody kind of publicly kind of demands poo -poo -poo poos <laughs> us, but then they want to know, well, how did you guys figure out how to do this? And I'm just like, figure it out for yourself, man, Mr. Professional Bigfoot Hunter. Um, you don't need you don't need us little peons giving you hints. But Alex is awesome, and we trade a lot of usable information back and forth. Um, there is a lot of 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 just knowledge that flows back and forth and pork chop uh, express said joe refuses to use anything strap on <laughs> so <laughs> anyway uh he recommended that so nowadays we we use the camera with the shotgun mic in a lot of situations and then i have that on a tripod and we just use that and a lot of times i am filming with one hand kind of looking at it and then looking around everywhere else um, I think it comes out pretty good considering it's yeah. just two of us uh, or trying to take like readings on like a piece of instrumentation while I like film with the other one. Yeah. Um, the whole thing is, is that we realized doing this, that in a lot of these areas, Jesse is usually the focal point of what's going on. And Jesse is kind of the magnet for a lot of this stuff. So even though she's not as photogenic as I am, we decided that we needed to have it. We had to kind of take that hit. Take that hit by not having me on camera 24-7. Yeah. That we needed to be willing to. Luckily, I'm humble enough to to accept that. And I, that, I appreciate so. you all being kind enough to yes. accept, you know, second banana. <laughs> second banana. <laughs> so thank you for that, Kat. I appreciate it. So... I think Catherine was out watching the eclipse today. I think I saw that. I think I saw that you guys were out watching it. So thank you so much for that, Catherine. We appreciate it. And then Truth Walker. Happy early birthday. Thank you for that. We Everybody's appreciate it. Everybody's throwing you knife money for your birthday. I haven't even got down that far yet. Oh, so yeah. I appreciate it. So Could've I appreciate it. That. Actually, it's going to be, I got my birthday knife. Now we are on to, we've got, we've got some big stuff planned, man. Um, somebody a few weeks ago had said, you guys need to put an Amazon wish list up. Like, I guess a lot of people do that. So I did this Amazon wish list and I was like, I'm not putting this thing up because it's all like really expensive crap. You know what I'm saying? So, I mean, we need it's like expensive crap. It's expensive. and then it's stuff like dude wipes because we're in the woods for a few days and we stink. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, but anyway, I greatly appreciate that truth Walker. Thank you. Um, Ray had said, I finally got my wife to watch your latest investigation and she enjoyed it. Cool. Thank you. 
And then when you stepped into the hole, Joe, she really worried that you stepped in a trap. It felt like a trap, but um, that's just, that's some real, for it being as level as it is out there, that's some treacherous ground, especially. It wasn't level right there. It was straight down. Um, It's just, it's And then that water, you know, it had been raining. That's the problem too. It had been raining so much prior to that, that the water was so high. Um, And that's a sizable body of water. So for it to get that high, it rained a lot. Yeah. Um, but the water was so high, we there was no way we were going to find any tracks yeah. or anything down there. Hey, thank you for that, Zach92. For for I am going to get a knife now. Good Lord. So, But anyway, it's uh, I, we greatly appreciate that. Thank you, guys. That's that's very touching. Very, very touching. Um, all right. Let me see where I'm at here. We have a lot. We've got a, the show's kind of going in every direction because you guys have got a lot of great questions and comments right now. So we're just going to go with the flow here. James Hood, as a fellow UFO and cryptid researcher, I never took the dogman phenomenon seriously until I saw Martin Grove's interview in the confessionals. I pay more attention now. Um, you're not the only one that's ever said that. And for us, we had obviously gone to the LBL prior to meeting Martin. And we had already had experiences in the LBL, already spoken to some very credible witnesses in the LBL. Remember going to the LBL the first night after we heard Martin tell his story publicly for the first time and how we both just kind of looked at each we other. We were very nervous. We about were it. nervous and like flat out scared. I'm not going to admit and it. And Katie I, was so mad. Like she was like, I'm never speaking to you. Again do not go into the LBL. Because you're going to be dead. But I mean, I just, I looked at Jesse. We were going into the LBL after Josh Turner's uh, dogman conference in Paris, Tennessee, where Martin first publicly spoke about his encounter. Yeah, we just heard the story in person. And we left after that was over and we went into the LBL. And I just remember looking at you going, I'm like, because I mean, we're tense going in. We're aware. It's, it's, we get nervous sometimes, obviously, given what we do, we take it seriously. But if if fear was a huge component, we wouldn't have lasted this long. Yeah. So, but that night, I just, just you know, it's like, I really don't want to be out here right now, man. I can't believe I'm doing this. So you're not the only person, and especially from a UFO perspective, I, I can't see how anybody who's taken the UFO phenomenon seriously could not start to take Dogman seriously. So, um, damn, I just got to that. Thank you, Julie. For whatever you may need for first aid. So <laughs> need a couple more splints. Thank you for that, Julie. Great. I thank you so much. Oh. We're immensely grateful. Yeah, thank you. that is really awesome. I did buy a case of hot sausages today. Somebody had just asked about that. Um, so you don't perfect present for Jesse, a moss covered barge filled with rocks and ser- and serves Vienna sausages 24-7. She sent me a literal photo of her at the grocery store. With I a, actually have the photo here. Oh, did you actually have it set up and ready to go? So well, I mean. You know, you can't hide joy. All right. I'm going to pull that up. I don't care if you people want to see it or not. You get to see it. So most most women will send sweet messages to their husbands. How are you, darling? I'm wearing a special outfit for you today. Something like that. That's what women do, right? Yes. Is that uh-huh. what women do? Mm-hmm. Not me. Not me at all. Here's what I do. Joe, I have great news. I have found a case of Vienna sausages. <laughs> <laughs> that was in Sam. So I got a case of these. I got two cases of these. So I have Vienna, so- not Vienna sausages, hot sausages. So I am the hot sausage queen as of right now, thankfully. Hawk just messaged me. What? Um, showed me the harness he was talking about. It's crazy because I had never seen this same thing before that he just sent me. It showed up on like... Uh, like an Amazon Amazon suggestion thing. I don't know if that would work or not, but I, it's weird that you mentioned that because I just saw that for the first time. It's a thing that goes over your back. I wouldn't be able to wear a backpack, I don't think, but in certain cases, mm-hmm. it might be really, really, really handy for what we use. So. Oh, Jesus Christ. Yeah. <laughs> Moondog Davis says, the Fae want Joe to be their breeder. <laughs> oh, <laughs> that escalated quickly. So Stop. You're going to end up in like a fairy basement. <clears throat> Good Lord. Um. Our boy, Charlie Expeditions. Charlie Expeditions is when you guys hear us talk about Death Wish on here, the crazy Caven guy. That is Charlie Expeditions. Um, one of us will put a link to his sh- YouTube channel here and put it in there. 
I uh, wanted to know, do you guys ever thought about wearing tactical vests? I've been considering it like with pockets and Molly might help. We wear those chest rigs. And um, the only thing about tactical vests is they're hot. Um, they, they keep heat up, especially and not just sexy. I mean, not, not just sexy, but um, they're up on the temperature. Yeah. Especially in the summer and especially um, when you've got backpacks on, on top of it. So yeah. then you've got a backpack, heavy backpack resting on top of that. Um, I, 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 we have, we thought about it once and then we just went with the chest rigs. Um, I've got a, if you want to put a link to your, I can't seem to find your channel on here for some reason. What have you done to get blocked by YouTube? Um, if you've got a link to your YouTube channel and you want to put that in the chat, please go right ahead and do so. Um, Paul says you guys should have a satellite phone. We have a uh, Garmin InReach Mini that is a satellite texter mm -hmm. that we use. That's also a personal locator beacon. And you'll see me use yeah. that throughout our videos. Um, I'd probably include that in every video that we have, mm -hmm. me using that Garmin InReach Mini. Um, so I'm in constant contact with someone back home. That way they know exactly where we are and they can click on a link and they can find us on a map. Um, so they know exactly where we are at all times and we stay in contact with somebody at home. That way if something does happen to us, um, we could get help if need be. Yeah. Um, there's also the SOS button on there that if one of us breaks a leg or something like that and we need to get helicoptered out of there, yeah. we can. Yeah. Only Jesse has the helicopter insurance because so. the Garmin's in her name. So, <laughs> and I'm the one who typically ends up getting hurt. So we'll see how that works Bad out for us. Um, pork chop express. Thank you. Please put this in the pork chop jar for me. Birthday, Joe. <laughs> thank you. Um, Michelle had said four ninety nine. Thank you so much for that, Michelle. We greatly appreciate it. You guys rock and love the dog man tree video. Best ever. Thank you. A um, couple more things here real quick. A lot of great stuff tonight. Uh, Kevin <coughs> had asked, have you guys ever had to give a warning shot on anything? No, not yet. When I say not yet, hopefully never. Um, we're real. You'll see us unzip our chest rigs sometimes to give like, and I think you even said in one video, I'm unzipping, I'm getting ready. Um, and that's to allow better access to our 10 millimeters. But we rarely draw our firearms out there. The only times we've really drawn is like when Jesse got- We had the bluff charge. Bluff charge when those things were in the trees above us. And again, we always say, I don't know what those were. Maybe we just had some pissed off raccoons you above draw, us. You drew, um, when we heard those, when we recorded those crazy sounds and we came and picked up the quarter and then we heard that clicking sound. From we heard the, the growls. There was something yeah. in the bush is not too far from us. Yeah. I pulled then because- And we, in the video, there's, we got eye shine. We got eye shine. Behind the tree. Off to our side because we were looking here and over here is where the eye shine happened at so we didn't see it until we reviewed the video and then we're like what the hell is that it's eyes reflecting back yeah. Come, uh, like peeking around the tree it's craziest thing ever but we we're that's only a handful of times in several years of doing this and i've never fired a shot because a couple things to keep in mind is that hey you can't get that bullet back once it's left so i mean if we ever in the position where we would need to defend ourselves we would so far we haven't been put in that position where it was like life or death at that point um so no we have not had to and knock on wood i hopefully never will have to but uh we also keep getting ourselves into sketchy situations and i think that's kind of we've decided we're probably just going to be pretty solo when it comes to doing expeditions. To yeah. You're not going to really see with us with a lot of people. Um, just because the danger aspect of it, being out with a bunch of armed people in the woods <laughs> yeah, um, who are jumpy about cryptids and you're um, traveling over uneven ground. And that's a good way to catch a bullet in the back of the head. Yeah, so. Joe and I, um, do and I have a good protocol. We're both armed. Um, but we completely trust each other. Um, we are not going to get so jumpy that we go and just start hauling off and sh yeah. shooting or something like that. So we trust each other in the woods. And mm -hmm. um, that's very important when you're going yeah. out and you're doing this in the middle of the night, in the dark, armed. And we also kind of know what the other one's going to do. We've the fact that we live, uh, that we live together and we do all work together all the time. I, we've, even though sometimes we do kind of pick her a little bit on camera, at the end of the day, you always see these like groups that form to look in just different like phenomena, like ghost groups, UFO groups, Bigfoot groups, now dogman groups. 
and it never fails that the groups eventually fall to chaos and they break apart. A lot of that, I think, is human nature, but a lot of it, I think, is the side effect of the phenomena that people are looking into. Right. So um, we try to keep it. We have, obviously, we've got people that we um, coordinate with. We've got people that we talk to. We have friends in the field. Um, you will see us out with some people, but you're not going to see us out with a lot of people. Um, you know, you'll you'll see us out with like the just the people that we we know that we have a rapport with and we know that if something goes wrong or we have a difference out of opinion out there, it's not going to break the friendship up mm -hmm. or cause friction out there. You know what I'm saying, um, you know, and we've got we've got people that that, you know, that we know that do this stuff that we may not agree with 100 percent on stuff. You know what I'm saying? But there's enough like respect and communication there to kind of keep it kind of keep everything rolling. So. Um, Paul, thank you for that. Man, I should have a birthday every week. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so thank you for that. Great, I greatly appreciate it, my friend. And same thing to you there, Larry. Thank you so much for thank that. Thank you, Larry. Sure. Greatly, greatly appreciate it. So yeah, I've been marking stuff. The whole yeah, time I'm gonna go here. through here and get into it. Um pile. <laughs> Kim Drescher for dude wipes. <laughs> we do stink out there. I'm gonna tell you that's, that's oh, it's gonna be horrendous come like summertime here it's yeah. already i dread the summertime i dread like warmer weather like that yeah. and it's just because of the insects we don't know what we're going to do when the cicada apocalypse happens out here how we're going to be able to effectively film especially at night and get anything other than the cicadas I, i'll just be amongst my people yes you know? amongst my people so i'm we've gonna gotta... go i'm gonna go native and mm -hmm. join them Ah, uh, Michael Tavar, following your channel and watching the LBL episodes, along with the Dogman Triangle show from Small Town Monsters, got me into the Dogman phenomena, especially living close to the Dogman Triangle in Texas. Huh. Um, keep your eyes and ears open if you ever have any experiences yourself or meet anybody down there that has some experiences. Our friend Aaron Dees is still compiling information for the Dogman Triangle. Yeah, and there. he's probably going to follow up to it. All right, we are yeah. going to answer the AGM question. There's a, been a bit of a meltdown in the chat about answering this guy's question about what AGM thermal do we what use? What meltdown has happened? It's just, we use the AGM Taipan. Do you remember the model number? It's a 384 Okay, is the, for the AGM. Yep, so. so that's the AGM we use. We also have another thermal that we use. It's that a I, Pulsar Axion XQ38. That I don't often use footage from, but that's actually the one that we got the images of what we do believe to be possibly, is that end of caveats yes um, what we believe possibly allegedly to be mm -hmm. a dog man in the lbl so that's what we got those images with but most of the time in the videos especially the ones i've been releasing release releasing recently um it's been that agm taipan um because that's what i carry on my belt mm -hmm. um i have a holster in my belt a little case that i carry that agm on and so I always have that at the ready. So if something happens, we hear something, I can easily just pop that thing out and use it. And mm -hmm. um, that's my dedicated thermal. Yeah. So what else we got? Um, Larry had asked, heard something about a possible earthquake around the LBL in the future. Do you hear anything about an earthquake? LBL? That's the thing about earthquakes. You don't know. <laughs> um, well, I mean, maybe they're expecting seismic. Um, there's been some seismic activity. Uh, there was there was a earthquake in New Jersey. Yeah. Gonna, I'm going to put that up and take a look at that. I am unfamiliar that, yeah. with that. So. Um, I don't know if there's a fault through there or not. Thank you, April. Thank you very much. We greatly appreciate it. So I need to come up with something other than we greatly appreciate it. Starting to sound canned and insincere, Thank even you. though it's very sincere. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. So. Um, So, da, 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 da. Richard Cox want to know if we have done firearms training. Yes, not specifically for the adventures, but it comes in handy for what we do. There's a lot of skill sets that you have to have that come in handy or are necessary to actually do this and do this with a level of confidence. Um, I'm Wilderness First Aid certified. I have survival training. I've gone through several stints of survival training. Wilderness First Aid certification. Um, of course, CPR, all of that stuff is involved in wilderness first aid certification, but you have to develop several skill sets when it comes to doing 
uh, paranormal or cryptid research if you want to do it in a serious manner. Joe has basically gotten himself an electrical engineering degree. Agree at this point. Um, and then SAR training, you know, SAR training. going through lost person behavior and like everything like that. And it's it's weird. We, we always say that if we hung this up tomorrow, that if we just went, can't do it anymore, we're done. Just the education we got along the way doing this is mm -hmm. like invaluable. And that's the other thing we're talking about is that I think you need to really see more people starting to invest in themselves as far as like growing their skill sets and their knowledge if you want to do this stuff. Yeah. Um, you have to because nobody starts off knowing how to do a lot of this stuff. And now, I mean, we were on what? Calling All Beings podcast. Mm -hmm. um, and they do everything, mostly UFOs, but Bigfoot stuff, paranormal stuff and everything like that. And the um, the main host, the, you know, the, the main guy there was just like, he's like, I've never had anybody on here that's this well-rounded and like everything out there. And I'm like, this is like hard won knowledge. We've had to invest a lot of time doing this because we don't know what we're dealing with out there. I so. mean, in the event something goes awry or you need to pivot or you need to do something, you have to know what you're doing. Yeah. Um, you can't just fly by the seat of your pants. Like if Joe broke his leg, I would have to handle that situation. Yeah. Um, and I'm probably going to. And I'm it's probably, probably going to happen. To. So, yeah. So you have to be prepared for that. Um, if you don't prepare for your expeditions and you're not equipped to do them, you don't have the right equipment, you don't have the right skill set, it can go sideways really freaking fast and yeah. it can have really bad results. And again, we're not because we don't have we don't have a lot of like support. there. We don't really have any support out there with us. We've got people that we could hit with the the text, you know, the satellite text if we had to. Um but well, there's just, you know, I mean, there's nobody waiting at the car for us. You know, there's nobody out of camera sight for us. And the other thing, too, is somebody had sent had sent me us a email basically saying, you guys just look like a couple of buffoons. And I'm going, I can't argue that fact, sir. But um, keep in mind, too, that when, uh, yes. <laughs> when, we're, when we're when we're out there doing this stuff, we're not out there filming us trying to behave wisely moving through the woods very quickly to get from point A to point B, we're out there looking for weird stuff. So we need to just be out there. Just we're not pondering. Yeah. So we're not, we're not acting like we're, you know, we're, you know, on a, you know, a planned hike from point A to point B and da, 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 da. We're out there looking for weird stuff. We're and gonna, we have to constantly, like I, I say, pivot. Yeah. You have to constantly change the plan, constantly pivot yeah. because you don't know what's going to happen. You don't know if anything's going to happen. And you have to just go with what you're given. And you have to, yeah. there, something comes up, you find a track way. You you hear a sound. You have to go for that. You don't, you can't prepare for what you're going to do. It's not, all right, at two o'clock, we'll arrive at the waterfall. We'll have a, mm -hmm. a lunch of sandwiches. And then we'll, <laughs> lunch of sandwiches. you know, so. cucumber sandwiches. And then we'll, you know, it's, oh, crap, this happened. Okay. We've got to stay out here for another God knows how long. Oh, we've got to go in this direction. We've got to figure out what we're going to do to get this. Do we have this equipment to capture this? Nope. We don't. Let's go with okay, what we got. So, so let's you know. go with what we've got. Let's yeah. kind of figure this out. Um, and you just have to be able to adapt um, within the situation. I mean, the one night investigation that we did recently, we were going to do something else. And as we were moving locations in our vehicle, we saw eye shine, tall eye shine from the road into the forest. And we were going, we don't know what it was. It was tall. Maybe it was a deer standing on like a little mound or something, but we saw that and we went, we need to scrap plan A and we need to go to plan B. Plan B is now going into this area, but we're not that familiar with because we saw something, man. Sometimes you can't just, you definitely can't play it safe. Um, no matter how well you plan, a lot of times that's going to go out the window the first time something weird happens out there. So thank you for that again, Larry. Thank you. We greatly appreciate it. Um, so a couple other things. Elwin Smith had asked, good evening, Jesse and Joe. I was wondering if you guys have ever tried, used any hearing enhancing ear pros uh, to improve catching more sounds. We have um Impact Sports, I think is what they're called, uh, the electronic earmuffs. And we use those occasionally, but the only problem is, is you can't record off of them. And it, it's sometimes, it's good work, like standing stationary, but moving through the woods, it's distracting. And it, it, it's, 
you end up not knowing how loud you are, the noise you're making and everything like that. Sometimes you're too loud, sometimes you're too quiet, because sometimes we want to generate noise up as we move. Um, we've got them. We, we have transitioned and we're experimenting with a couple of different shotgun mics right now. We've got another shotgun mic we're getting ready to throw into the mix to see what we can do um, to try to maximize our ability to catch sounds at a distance. And sometimes you can catch great sounds at a distance, but then our voices sound terrible, you know, because we're up close. So then people can't understand what we're saying. So, um, but well, yeah, we're constantly, constantly kind of trying to fine tune stuff. So. <coughs> Excuse me. The pollen has been freaking killing me, man. Everybody so, is. Struggling. I'm just eyes. Are My wobbling. eyes are killing me because I had to. I had to blow yeah. off the porch, and I was like, just giant dust of pollen just went. Deborah Stewart, thank you. Thank you, Deborah, for that and the compliment of the great show. We're all over the place tonight, so thank you for that, Deborah. Thank you so so much. Thank all of you guys so far. This has been extremely kind and generous to you all. Well, Catherine Gay says she's going to the. You only turned twenty-one once. Yeah, you know. <laughs> Somebody did say happy twenty-first birthday. Spry young lad of you know. Yeah, Saturday's Joe's birthday. Fresh-faced, you know. Um, He's it just was, a child. It was, it was funny because we were um, we were talked about meeting that guy, the uh, the guy that does the the photography for the bands and the videos and everything like that, and. Um, Jesse went to the bathroom while we were like talking to him out there, and so he. He says to me, he goes, oh, you guys like, seems like such a great couple. And then uh, Jesse was coming back and he goes, hey, by the way, how old are you? And Jesse goes, oh, I'm this old. And he turns out to me and he goes, how old are you? And I just went, I'm going to be turning 53 in like a week. And I'm this old. I like how you avoided saying And he goes, he this goes, so he goes. Everybody knows I'm 30. He's like, he was 52 and his, his wife's Jesse's age. So he just all of a sudden just went held out for the fist bump <laughs> at that point. And I was like, you know what I'm talking about, brother? So, oh, my goodness. Anyway, cradle robbers, man. So. Jesus. <clears throat> I'm 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 on this side of forty now. Okay. Yeah. Oh, well, yeah. You're good. It's time to trade me in. Yep. Got to do this every few years. Trade in one night. Up. You guys will tune in, and it'll just be a completely different chick. <laughs> You'll dye your just, hair, and then we'll you're go like, through. You better learn how to hunt Bigfoot, girl. We'll go through and like like edit all the old videos, and it'll just be like a bad CGI <laughs> like overlay of like whoever the new chick is. You know what I'm saying? So. And then people will be in the con like chat going, I like New Jesse. New Jesse's really <laughs> oh, well, you, you guys know? better not like New Jesse. What we can call her Bessie or something. Bessie. So court, courts, all other opinions aside, you guys are not out there with the film crew. You are the definition of console reporting. <laughs> Jesse calls it gorilla filmmaking. Like gorilla, like armed gorillas, although I guess regular gorillas can be armed, but it's gorilla gorilla filmmaking. Gorilla gorilla filmmaking. Yeah. So all right. So oh, goodness gracious. Let me uh, Julie Bug was asking Jesse, are you <coughs> excuse me? You know, I'm dying that man. way. I know I'm that dying. way. People are gonna be you like just those, pop, look right all over me. Those people that hack and sneeze all night. I'm gonna replace you and break their microphones. And who's gonna fix your microphone? The next guy I can be able to do the microphone. Julie Bug asks, Jesse, are you still planning on doing shirts? Yes, I'm on the I'm in the process <clears> of that. It's a it's it's a process. Um, because merchandising this stuff is very difficult to find a person who can do it and supply it and then be able to get the logistics together to start launching it and ship everything out. So it is happening. It is in the works. It will happen. You will all know. Thank you. Birthday whipping. So birthday whipping. Birthday whipping. That ain't happening on camera. Um, so uh, a couple quick things. What else did I get here? Lady Wolf, new chick should be afraid, very afraid. <laughs> so April had asked about those child-sized footprints. Feral person, maybe. Anything we ever get like that, like footage-wise, is always so controversial. Um, <clears throat> and it's, I, I don't know, I don't know. One of them... If you guys have ever seen like the white sands photo, like footprints that were preserved 14,000 years ago, something like that, 12,000 years ago, uh, they're the white sands footprints. You can find them online if you look at them. Oh, I'm pulled up. A lot of those look like the white sands footprints. One set had a very long, big toe on it. 
And at first I thought it was maybe somebody was just dragging their feet or doing something, but I'm looking at it going, no, that just looks like a weirdly long, people have weirdly shaped feet. Um, oh, why are these? Oh, a, is that a good one? Uh, is that which, acceptable? Or you can, do you, like, you can do that one right there if you want to. This so. one here? Mm -hmm. But they looked very, and it's, a, it's where some early humans walked through um, mud from like, I think it was a, from some sort of, <clears throat> seismic eruption and it fossilized so when they found these it kind of pushed back the time frame for what they're willing to acknowledge humans being on the northern american continent mm -hmm. so a lot of what we now these are feet that have never worn shoes before and if you look at the footprints we found they're very similar to them they're very similar in shape um, very similar specifically in shape. let me let me show you something here. Can you see my cursor on there? Yeah, you can. Specifically, this guy, these guys right here. Mm -hmm. You see that very narrow uh, heel there? And what's weird is... This looks more like a standard kind of footprint, but that mm -hmm. narrow heel right there. Mm -hmm. And, and if you shape. notice, that one also has what seems to be an elongated yeah. big toe. So... Yeah. Um, Fascinating. So whenever you... We find footprints that have like a narrower heel... People always just go, that shoe's worn a foot. I mean, that shoe's worn a foot. That foot's, that foot's worn a shoe. That can't be anything other than just like a barefoot modern human being running around. And I'm just like, have you guys, these are feet that have never worn shoes. These were before Nike came along, you know. Um, if they were wearing any sort of foot coverings, they probably would have been wearing them in the, the, the medium that they were walking through. Mm -hmm. So the footprints we found on that lakeside reminded me of these, but they were really small. They were the size of a six or a seven year old child. And there's no sign of a boat pulling to shore there. And even if a boat had pulled to shore there, you would have seen a disturbance on the shoreline where the boat came ashore. You would see the feet prints starting there, wandering around, coming back to that location, gone. These, these footprints were going from one side of the lake down the other, they were following the shoreline and then they disappeared near those big holes and where we found those big canine prints at too. Um, so when you start looking at it and, and how we found them, it doesn't make sense that it was children with deformed feet and those footprints were deep in the sand, man. Yeah. I mean, so you've got six-year-olds with deformed feet who are either obese or wearing heavy packs that have negligent parents that are, you know, somehow on this lake shore. And it was winter. It was like a little warm, but it was still winter. That water's cold, man. So uh, I don't know. We don't know still what those footprints were. Um, <clears throat> I would go back to this, though, that given, and like we've talked about, the, prox the size and what's in proximity to that area, I would find it hard to believe that there could be a breeding population of feral people out there yeah there'd have to be something else going on to keep them undiscovered um same thing with sasquatch if there's sasquatch out there the grove has been like a real eye opener for me because we you guys remember those early streams we kind of poo-pooed the grove area and just went ah, nothing going it's impossible mm -hmm. yeah and then we went back to investigate those hunter reports getting chased out and we were going holy crap something's going on here and this makes no sense that it could be going on here, right? It doesn't make any sense that there's a breeding population of <clears throat> undiscovered anything out there. And they're just having babies in the woods. They're running around eating and breeding and doing all that. Something else going on there where something's coming from somewhere else, hanging out there for a while, doing its business, and then just moving on. And whether that's underground, in a dimension, whatever it is, I don't know. But it's it's weird out there. So Sean Barry says, so it's possible there were feral children in the area then. I mean, I can't rule it out. I mean, I don't I know. I don't you know. know but uh, I mean, it had to be within a short time frame from when we were there. I mean, it could be possible that we're at a gas station nearby one day and somebody pulls up with a bunch of weird looking six year olds that have backpacks full of rocks and they're going, Timmy, your feet are giving you problems. And we could go, holy crap, you guys ever walk around a lake shore in the middle of winter all the time? You know, about, you know, 10 miles. That yeah, way. Sure. That's what the kids love it. You know, so I can't rule it out. I mean, I can't say 
I don't know what it is. It's just, it's weird. And we don't have a mundane explanation for it. Quinn Montoya mm -hmm. says, uh, was there a quick cave type thing under the tree near the footprints? There was an, like an alcove. It was dug out. And then there was that flap of moss over <laughs> it. It wasn't super deep. Like I couldn't walk way back in there, but I could easily get back in there and have shelter and then have a, a place of concealment. Get a Yeti for electrical tape and cheap beer. I don't know what the electrical tape's for, but. You know what the electrical tape's I know what the for. electrical tape's for. So thank you, buddy. We appreciate that. Thank you so much. And Ghetto Yeti said, uh, don't forget the kid's huge dog. I misread that for a second. Good board. Anyway. Um, I know I'm just saying. So the kid, the dog, the footprints were, and I wish I had them on the computer. They're like immense, man. Let me see if I can hold it up to the screen. I think you included it in the video when you put it on there. What? The footprints with the tape measure for them. So is that the little ones? Oh, that's one of those. I don't know if that was the shore. That's the that's the one of the shore ones. So, email yeah. them to our email, and I'll pull them right up. Go for it, kid. Can I just do that? And then it's gonna just do it out. So you know, um, just try to be professional, but not today, huh? Uh, just email them. I love how I can like build like really crazy like equipment and come up with conceptual ideas that nobody else comes up to. And then I'm like sitting here going, how do I send this photo to the Gmail? So uh, honey, can you show <laughs> Papa how to email? Do the email. Uh, Siri, send a photo to anyone. Right. Cocaine puck wedgies. <laughs> Small, medium, large, actual size. Bang. Oh my God. Why is it so complicated? All right, go on. They make these things to Darcy re up. Darcy's an OG. Been here since the beginning. OG. Appreciate that, OG. OGHB, baby. O OG. <laughs> Good Lord. Did you send it to our email? I did send it to our email. <laughs> and then Darcy threw 10 bucks on top of it. Appreciate that. Thank you. <clears throat> God, you. Hey, this is a good one. So, Alisma. Hey, thanks for your cool videos. Thank you for watching. Are you afraid when you guys go out in the night? I'm amazed. I will never be able to do that. Hello from South Africa. 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 We've been getting people from all over the world. Like yeah. That. Going yeah. weird. Internet international. We are. Helbit Holler International. You know. That's, when we when that sounds like a grift. <laughs> it does sound like anything a, with international. Sounds like a grift. Um uh, yeah, we're it's it gets tense. I mean, we don't start the night off afraid, but there's been a handful of times that we've been legit scared. You can see it in Jesse's face sometimes when she goes. Jesse's very expressive. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> I don't know if you know that. You don't ever watch these videos and go, I wonder what Jesse was feeling at that exact moment. It's just she hides everything so well. Um, but yeah, there's moments when we've gotten we have gotten afraid. It didn't come through. No. Me... Do you want to just text it to me and then I'll just email it? You, yeah. It is your birthday. You are getting up there. I'm getting up there, man. We're having so many. Tr yeah. It's not even in your scent, is it? No, it didn't go through. No, okay. it didn't. Oh, yep. There we go. Oh, God. Honey. Darling. Darling. I can't make read. Make the phone work for me, please. There's a. Lonely Russian woman with size F breasts trying to talk to me. <laughs> she says she needs my social security number. So... She seems nice enough. I'm getting to that point, man. Eventually, it's going to be, here's what's going to happen is eventually, I'm going to just, I'm going to like 10, no, probably like 15 years from now, we're still going to be doing this. Still probably no damn closer to finding answers, but still just mumbling around doing our thing. And Jesse is just going to, we'll be doing a live stream. And she's just going to all of a sudden, like, you know, camera phone will be over here and she'll just be like, I'm just going to stake this old mother effer out here in the woods and see what happens. Oh my and God. I'm just going to be like, what? And you'll be like, stay here, honey. And then I'll, she'll give me the old goat from Jurassic Park treatment. The, you old, know what I'm the old goat so, treatment. The old goat treatment. So, <laughs> <clears throat> Lady Wolf, thank you so much for that. Thank you so, so, so much for that. Best mod in the business right there. Bam! Big old dog print, Big baby! Big old dog print, baby. That oh, was an act of Congress. That was probably, <laughs> um, it's not like a full five and a half inches because I was up a little bit on that. So you're looking at about probably five and a quarter to 
a little over five and a quarter. It's pretty big. Now that's not a full size tape measure, so don't you guys get lose your stuff. That's Just look at the inches, not the size. What is that? A Fat Max, Baby Max. Fat Max Baby. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, pork chop, thank you. What Need that you? what that is, a fat max baby. <laughs> okay, hold on. Pork chop express. Need your thoughts. Found out Betsy Bell, daughter of John Bell, <laughs> is buried near where I live. Want to investigate for historical interest only. We've got a guy. Yeah. In case you didn't know. <clears throat> I got whose birthday also just came through. Yes. Happy birthday, Dewey. Yes. That's the most engagement I've ever had on a Facebook post, is wishing him a happy birthday. I'm just, you know. Oh, it's Dewey's sidekick, Joe. Um, <clears throat> so, Pork Chop, you need to... Dewey Edwards literally wrote the book on that subject. I'm not I so like sure. how you were avoiding saying that. I'm not. Every time I say it, then Good I job. get... Yeah. <clears throat> he is the, the OG person. Um, you guys need to hook up on Discord together. If, if Dewey's still watching, and hopefully he is. Um, Stitch Witch is on here. Okay, Stitch is on there. But yeah, Dewey is the is the i'm going to say this right now he is probably the world's best authority on that subject that particular subject and the thomas mantel case mm -hmm. um <clears throat> so um we can get you and maybe dewey will be kind enough to grace us with his knowledge because i would definitely encourage you to consult with him before you do that all right <clears throat> what else we got here Awesome. I, you know what? We were even going, damn, I don't have a lot of stuff prepared for this tonight. And then you guys have just thrown a bunch of really good stuff at us this evening. Oh, I put this up earlier because Catherine Kay is going to the Wildman Conference, Tennessee Wildman Conference. Oh, awesome. It's going to, Tennessee Wildman Conference is going to be us, the Man Dooster Edwards that we just talked about, Martin Groves, yeah. Daryl Denton, yeah. <clears throat> a few other people that could be there, but we're the um, main ones. Just, we'll, we're all you need to see. Where all you need to see? Oh, uh, it's going to be a lot of fun. I'm we'll try to go with the first four positions, and then when the last one of us goes, everybody can just go. Is that it? We're done. Thank you, guys. Jesus Christ. I we're gonna um, we're gonna try to do a little after party, uh, just a little get together for everybody. So I'm mm -hmm. just trying to find a place to do that. Mm -hmm. So if you guys come up to the Tennessee Wild Man uh, Encrypted Con. We're going to do like a Hellbender after party, I think. We kind of took it over last time. It was great. We had a bunch of people there. Yeah, so. we had a lot of fun. We had a lot of fun. We kidnapped Kim Drescher. It was a good time. We kidnapped Kim Drescher um, was there with us. That's why we, if you ever see me refer to her as Patty Hurst, because we just Patty Hurst her. We kidnapped her. We threw her in the back of the car. We were like going and we were trying to get into Werewolf Springs and the park had closed off all of that, knowing the people that were in for this convention. Like the conference. sorts of people <laughs> that were going to be out and about. So we got Kim in the car with us, got Kim Drescher in the car with us. And they, so they blocked a bunch of stuff out and we're like going, we're getting into werewolf Springs. And we were like going, Kim, we just got to warn you. We might get up to some shades, like shady shit getting in here. If you're, and she's just like, I'm down for anything. I'm down. And I'm just going, all right, man, you got it. So we were still unable to get in there though. They, they were able to, they were able to block us. So, <clears throat> Uh, Michael Russell says, happy birthday. And thank you for thank being you for a Michael. member, Michael. A lot of, yeah, a lot of the, the five-month folks are coming up for renewal right now. Thank you, Michael. Um, Lady Trip Wolf. around the sun. And the sun was almost blotted out today. Yes, indeed. So, <clears throat> all right. Dun, dun, dun. Brandon measured his 100-pound uh, Rottweiler about 3.75 inches. There we go. Thank you for that, Brandon. So what is this one? <clears throat> that is about five and a quarter. It's less than five and a half. Um, wow. Because the tape measure was up a little bit, you can see on the top. Yeah. Um, so I can't say it's a true five and a half inch yeah. print. Uh, but because we were trying to do it so the tape measure wouldn't fall over, and we were trying to also not um, disturb the earth on the side of that print, but I wanted it right up there. So when I got it in position, it was staying steady. I just left it, but it, um, that's a big, that's a big print. You know what I'm saying? That's a very big print. And then we find prints like that around these small bare footprints that are in there. Yeah. So, <clears throat> um, so Manny, um, it's not Carmen, it's Manny. Manny said, have you guys heard of smoke wolves in the Tigrat Valley in West Virginia? 
Have you heard of smoke wolves? That sounds familiar. It sounds familiar. But I don't know what that is. Mm. Joe is now going to the internet and he's going to internet to help me i have not heard Siri, of... tell me of the smoke wolf. i'll have to pull it up now i'm not i if i've heard about it it's vague um yeah. that sounds familiar yeah it does sound familiar but stephen bowen even a year ago you guys came off as a good mix of professionalism and being real people not buffoons <laughs> Well, uh, it's debatable. Jury's still out on the booth. The buffoon jury is out. <laughs> the, the buffoon, buffoon judge. Have, Jerry, have you reached a decision? Not yet, your buffoon honor. So, The judge is still looking into us. <laughs> yes, the judge is looking into us. So. Uh, friendless Craig. Um, you can find a friend here, Craig. Good day, Joe. Uh, in one of your videos, do you think you've seen a ghost? Uh, I think you may be referring to that first trip to the LBL we did on the summer solstice. I when you saw that woman in white that, figure. So we it was the the night of midsummer, and as best we can tell, it was like at the apex of midsummer. You know, like the very middle part of the longest night of the the year, or no, the shortest night of the year. I'm sorry, <clears throat> midsummer's night. It's very. It's very charged with like tradition and superstition and folklore by lots of different cultures. And so we were out and we had just left the cemetery that lies next to where the 1982 massacre supposedly happened. So when we were at the cemetery earlier, someone had been defecating on the gravestones and we were just like, what the hell? So we used what water and everything like that we had to try to clean it up as best we could. Um, so later on, we're coming down a gravel road that leads away from that cemetery. And when we're moving, we're also trying to keep an eye around us, okay? And a lot of times what we'll do is if we're moving with white light, we will look in a quick direction, just do a momentary like on real quick and then turn it back off. Hits our night vision. That's why we use red flashlights now. But back in the day, we we didn't have red flashlights good enough to do this. So we were using the, the white ones still. So I look over our shoulders and I just hit it on for like a split second. And there's a woman standing there. She's very monochrome. Um, she's grayish. Do you know what I'm saying? Like a, a pale grayish kind of dingy hair. looking, almost dingy looking, long straight gray hair and she just looks like she wants to kill me she's just like enraged all this just happens and at first i'm not expecting to see somebody standing there so i'm still kind of processing that b she looks very odd c she looks like she's ready to kill me just the rage on her face the first thing that goes to my mind is is holy crap and it doesn't make i mean it doesn't make sense in retrospect but and i know it's nighttime but the first thing that went to my head is somebody's come up here to like visit a relative who's in this graveyard because we couldn't clean it up totally there's still like traces there we got best we could with what we had um and you know we were actually didn't really have drinking water or anything like that that night because we used pretty much everything we had to try to clean up as best we could but there were still signs of what people had been basically using that area as a latrine yeah and i thought somebody has come to visit their family members and they've seen the mess that's there and we're the only people here this lady thinks that we're the ones who did this and she's obviously enraged. And I don't even have it. Obviously that's going through my mind. I think it quicker than I can explain it. But before I could complete that thought, she's just gone just like that. And I just, I'm like going, what the hell? And I couldn't convince myself that it was my eyes playing tricks on me. I tried to, and then I'm just like, no, I know what I just saw. And that was a weird moment for me. That was like a very, I'm not a paranormal person. Your Joe not, is not a ghost, not a ghost guy, guy, you know, um, at all. I'm all. more open to the possibilities of That's why stuff. his first thought, like, if I see that, let me tell you something. I see that, I'm like, there's a ghost lady. No, I, but I just thought like, that. But, like, you were like, oh, no, this, this lady's mad at me, <laughs> you know? Because like, of what has possibly happened there. And I'm just going. Um, oh, so, update. So. I got an update. What's your update? Smoke wolves were a mountain monster thing. Oh, gotcha, gotcha. Okay, yes. that's why I've heard it. So, so. yes. Update, update. Okay. Update, update. Breaking news, breaking news. Uh, who is that that does breaking news? Is that? That is that guy on YouTube who has that, he looks like, he looks like Beaker. He does look like Beaker. What is that? It's a, uh, 
Agenda free. Yeah, agenda television. Free. Breaking news. Breaking, breaking news, news. Breaking news. Breaking news. We had to like steal. Uh, we also have some breaking news. Breaking news here. Uh, new member. Let's a, a new member announcement. Nancy, welcome to the fold. Uh, breaking news. Breaking news as well. Randy Simpson, also a new member to the Hellbender tribe. The more people we get on this, um, and I think the people that are members right now in the chat can tell you, we have been doing some cool stuff. We're still doing all the stuff we did for the for public subscribers. We're never going to stop doing that. If you guys are not in the opera, don't have the ability to like become a member, that's fine. The field investigations, the Monday night lives, everything like that is gonna not going to stay. We just do extra stuff for the members, mostly stuff that we can't share publicly because we don't want, we want it to be fairly small because as it gets more high profile, the chances of somebody trying to like dox us or hoax us or anything like that becomes greater. But I think hopefully that the people that have been members for a few months will say that it's been, I hope at least, a worthwhile project to support, you mm -hmm. know. Um, and with the member support, we're able to start doing different stuff like, you know, the different microphones that we're able to record audio that we share with everybody then. <clears throat> um, hopefully in the next couple of months, we'll be upgrading and getting the replacing the thermal imager that we broke trying to operate in the rain, even though it was supposed to be rainproof. Never get a flare. Um, Stick with AGM and Pulsar. Don't ever get a FLIR thermal. Um, but it's a public service <clears throat> announcement. Public service announcement. But I mean, as we're talking, a bunch of people are rejoining. Miranda, Bristol. So courts. Courts. There you are. Uh, courts Gardner was asked. <clears throat> said, uh, "Dude, that Gray Lady story, ghost story, is awesome. What episode of y'all's was this?" I think this was that is the, the second. So here's a link to it. Second LBL video we ever did before the werewolf experiments yes it's the it's the night after we saw that thing on and here's the thing is that we went to the lbl like on a lark and we were making memes and jokes about it the whole time because we didn't think there was anything there and mm -hmm. then the first night we see that thing on thermal and we still don't know what it is <clears throat> it moved i've got two images of it it's different between the two images um <laughs> you see an eye in one, you don't see it in the second one. But I, so that was like ground shattering for us. Like, you know, like yeah. and then the next night I see this and I didn't catch it on camera. I didn't. And if anybody just goes, I don't well, believe you. you, you or your reaction is on camera. <clears throat> um, I kind of have to talk you off a ledge in a way because you are. Yeah. And you're very, you're usually very calm. I'm usually the one that's spastic and has reactions. You're usually very calm, but you were having, I had to bring you back from the edge. Yeah, it was um, weird. You were not, man. you were not well, you know. It's because uh, I was trying my best to like debunk what just happened to me. And I was just standing there going, if I'm going to debunk this, I'm going to lie to myself. I'm going to yeah. have to lie to myself. I'm going to have to like, I'm going to have to, to believe something that I know is not true in order to fit with my what how i believe the universe had worked up into that moment. yeah um and i was just so that was me just struggling through it you know and i didn't catch it on camera it was a split second that was gone but i'll tell you this my eyes did not play a trick on me i mm -hmm. saw it i saw exactly what it was um and if nobody wants to believe that i would probably have a hard time before believing it myself so yeah. i got no problem with that at all um one day you may experience something similar and you'll walk away like i did going holy crap this is just so much weirder than what i I came in looking for weird stuff and it's so much weirder than what I thought. So thank you for that, Randy. As I share my ghost story here that I'm still slightly weirded out by, but <clears throat> fuck. Thank you for that. Thank you for that. And then the the praise there, my friend. I we tried to we try to keep this entertaining, even though it's sometimes kind of sometimes, you know, and, and people have actually been going too. We want to see some of the not the behind the scenes stuff, but even when we go out and nothing happens, mm -hmm. um, sometimes it's kind of interesting still seeing, I don't how do we present that? Just go, hey guys, it's a cool video you may want to see. Because I don't want to clickbait it and go, you know, um, Sasquatch discovered, question mark, question mark, question mark. And then it's just us in the woods for three days and nothing happens. Um, I guess there's a way to maybe just put it out and just go for. Joe spills the beans. Joe spills the beans. So, um, yeah. we, you know what we need to do? What do we need? Is next time we go up to that creepy cabin we stayed at, we'll have to give the members like a tour. 
kind of weird, man. It's like a live tour <laughs> of that thing, because that thing was, dare I say, bananas. It was bananas. It was bananas. It was a, dare I say, haunted as well. <clears throat> Good God, I'm behind the chat. Yeah, I'm trying to get up here. Um, they're all saying the membership is worth it. Thank you, guys. We try. Happy birthday for July. Huh? So, um, <laughs> Tracker's got a good point. Did you welcome Alan? I did not welcome. Welcome Al. Welcome him. Welcome Al. Welcome awesome. him. Welcome Al. <laughs> Tracker says Joe can barely keep up with her in the woods. Somebody emailed us, and I happened to read it, and it was like, and it was a lady going, "Dear, I really enjoy your videos, but you need to slow down. That man is dying behind you." <laughs> and I'm, I just went. This is the man. Thank you for that, ma'am. Um, yeah, I I'm, am dying. Please tell I am her. Dying. Please tell her, because I'm carrying Please the camera, me. the tripod, the batteries, and it's not. I mean, she Jesse carries stuff, but I have to carry and have the stuff accessible because I'm filming. Yes, I carry the video. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, and then I carry the water because my pack is set up for it. You know, so I'm carrying like the water for the day, uh, the water filter. Everything like that. It's a lot. And I'm a hundred pounds heavier than her. I'm like a foot and a half taller, man. So I can't just zip through the woods like that, you know? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> oh my God. This has been fun. All right. So let me catch you real quick. Yeah. Byram. <laughs> It has been worth the membership just to see the flat of Vienna sausages it helped <laughs> help to purchase. To purchase. <laughs> I st yeah. You know, I'm, eventually, I'm, you know, one day we're going to do a members thing, maybe when we hit like a certain number. Um, you want a cooking show where I'm just no, like, opening we'll, cans? We'll, we'll, have, we'll have a member stream. We'll be wearing fur coats, like a top hat and a monocle. Eating Vienna sausages. And then you'll just have a stack of Vienna sausages next to you and just be like, I got to you know, be honest with you. I am really into the barbecue of Vienna sausages right now. I've been off the, <clears> uh, I've been off the plain Janes. Yeah. I'll come back. But then BBQs mm -hmm. are where it's at. EDP Everyday Pyro says impact sports, which is the earmuffs we were talking about earlier. Yeah. Um, are for shooting, they block loud stuff. They do. They also magnify the sound around you. Then they have an automatic shut off if like there's a percussive um, noise around you. So they have a sensor that because it's weird because a few years ago we were talking about Chinese clones earlier. Uh, some cloned like fake impact sports got on the market and it wasn't dampening loud noises. Not the Chinese clones I was thinking of. So they had the people that had the, the noise amplification turned up all the way. were expecting the gunshots to be canceled out. Canceled out. And instead they were magnified as well. And people were having like permanent ear damage for it. So I bet those come <clears throat> free with the eclipse glasses. Yeah. Exactly. Chinese eclipse glasses. <laughs> yeah. You get the eclipse glasses, and then here, listen to this bullhorn. The Communist you know? Party is like, we've yeah. got them now. Yeah, so deaf and blind. All right. Oh my god. Good God. Um. Ghetto Yeti chasing the talent is brutal. The talent is brutal. He just got to open a can of barbecue Vienna sausages, and, and I'm just throw them and have I'll a spin slow right down. Back. So I'm spin right back around. Spin right back around. <clears throat> Kim Drescher is reading one of my favorite books right now, Demonic Reality, Patrick Harper. Um, Patrick Harper, there's a couple of books that, for people that are like serious about this stuff, and you start to realize that even when I say intertwined, all of these phenomena might not be from the same source. Something's going on, man. Yeah. There's some sort of linkage here that I don't know. I don't know what it is. And if they're separate phenomenon, then why do they seem to occur in the same time, in the same place, in close proximity to each other? I don't know. But Patrick Harper's Daemonic Reality, um, The Trickster and the Paranormal by George P. Hansen. And then we're rereading a lot of like John Keel right now, and it's resonating with us. We're reading it like years in the past. It was just another book to read. I'm trying to read like the eighth tower where he really dives into the super spectrum, which I'm not going to go too much into right now. And it's, I can't even highlight stuff because it's just every page is like highlighted with stuff. I'm just, I got to get back on Keel. Yeah. I'm, I'm doing a, the dark path right now. So it's like nothing but occult symbolism but stuff on my end. This is not easy read stuff. This is not park ranger sees Bigfoot short story collection. It's very, 
involved. It's involved in and depth. it's deep and you have to constantly stop and cross reference stuff. It's not easy stuff to read, but I'm telling you, man, if you ever want to dive into it, it will. I see stuff happen all the time that I go, damn, this matches up with like the trickster and the paranormal and demonic reality. Do you know what I'm saying? Both from the phenomenon itself and the people who are also involved in the topic. It's just very weird. And it's, if I had to pick two books to three books to read would be the eighth tower, John Keel, demonic reality, trickster and the paranormal trickster and the paranormal. I have a background in anthropology and I have to sometimes, because he draws onto a lot of anthropological concepts. Um, and it's just, it's, I, I have to stop and go, I kind of remember this, but like look back up to cross reference it, but it's, it's uh it's worth your time if you want to look into it uh kyle from encrypted connections i've been after him for a while to uh to get into those books and he's getting ready to dive into them so um oh one weird thing i meant to i was on the phone with you earlier i meant to tell you this today has a lot of weird significance um mm -hmm. today is the day if you guys if any of you are familiar with alistair crowley um, he was an English occultist, and uh, on April 8th, 1904, the voice of Awas, which was this disembodied voice that spoke to him and told him what to write and how to build, like, Thelema, began speaking to him, and he began writing the Book of the Law. Today? Today. 120 years ago? 1904. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Well, that was actually... <clears throat> Um, to go on a weird tangent there. I just yeah. thought about that because I was talking about the dark path. Hawk, uh, Joe, will you be going to the LBL later this year when the Brotherhood goes? I, is the Brotherhood going to the L? I don't know. I know there, I, there was a meet and greet, I guess, this past weekend or Friday or Saturday or Sunday. Um, Martin had mentioned he was going to it, but we didn't know anything about that either. Uh, we're kind of the odd men out with the whole thing. Um, so I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. We were in North Carolina. Yeah. I don't know any uh, details on it. So I cannot say one way or the other. I'm assuming that is a thing that is being planned or has been planned. I do not know. Um, Chris was taking offense to your comment. Park Ranger sees Bigfoot. <laughs> Park Ranger spills the baby beans. It's. Uh, I don't know how much of your personal information I can share here openly, but it is. He's a. He's a park ranger. He's a park ranger. And it's go. funny Sleep because we have said to him, I'm going, and he. Seen some, he's seen some stuff. And I'm always just like, if you're what they make AI generated content about. Because all that AI generated content for a while was very shocked. I'll AI. never, I will never forget the hardest I've ever laughed. We were driving down the, we were in the LBL. We were driving down the trace and we were just bitching about AI, all, AI generated content, all of this AI generated content that was, I guess it's still out, right? Yeah. I but know. I mean, this is, we're but, in like day five in the LBL. We're, we're cut, yeah, we're bruised, we're, we're disgusting, blisters, and we're like, we're, we're working, we're working through the night, we're filming, we're going to all these crazy places. We're hiking constantly. We're literally sitting in the car eating pop cold pop tarts out of a wrapper um, just to do this. And we were laughing so hard because we're like, you know what we got to do? We just have to make these AI videos. Park Ranger spills the baby beans narrated yeah. by Megan Froman. <laughs> because it's always weird. It's AI like, generated. That's kind of close to it, but it's, it's not like actually. it's Morgan Freeman, but it was Megan Froman spills the baby beans of the park. Ranger. Cause all of that stuff was park ranger spills the beans. And it was just a AI generated <laughs> terrified park ranger with the smoky, the bear hat on. And that was like every video for like a good solid two or three months. So. Yeah. Anyway. Let's see what this is. We're going to be wrapping it up shortly here, folks. Um, get a, get a, like some memberships. Yeah, man. I mean, we are trying to... The whole goal of memberships when we, people talk to us about launching it, and it's and we're not even trying to sound goofy and insincere. People who had to force us to do it, we were really resistant to doing any stuff like that. Um, like I say every week, we are awesome at the spending money aspect of this thing. Do you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. We're awesome at that. We're so good at that. Um, trying to support the project financially, we are pretty crappy at. So 
Um, but the whole plan of it was, was to be able to like kind of finally do some stuff that we couldn't normally do. And we've been able to do that and it's given the members some stuff. And then it's also given us stuff to share with the public as well. So I think it's been a big win and hopefully everybody that's done it has felt, has felt fulfilled. So. Yeah. Um, we're going to wrap it up in a second. Yeah. Is, uh, if it, we're going to do last call here. If you guys have anything you want to throw out there, ask, uh, put out there, anything like that. Um, Let me, and I'll, while you're talking, I'm going to kind of go through here to see if Crystal knows what's up. The equipment manager, I'm the camera guy. We need a pack horse. That's Are you me. calling me the man, the that equipment, the equipment. I need a title equipment manager. So camera guy manager sean barry filthy casual you were on his filthy casual earlier do you have to change channels can you have two channels like that he's got he is many he's, he's many he's he he legion he is so legion. <laughs> the distance thing you got to stick closer together people get got when the woods and they're separated i trust me that's every day of my life um i am so just a little procedural type thing jesse's ahead I'm filming from behind. Remember one guy was complaining because your butt was in it too much. You know what I'm saying? He just follows her around filming her butt, you know? Um, so what am I've I supposed to do with it? Filming not, not <clears throat> have like it? a shield, a cardboard shield, like over top of it with bungees and duct tape. This but, is my butt shield for butt shield. 2000 butt shield. 2000 so, for dog man lover. 23. So, uh, I'm filming and then also trying to look around and also trying to watch behind us. So, and then I'm also, again, a foot taller, 100 pounds heavier, and I'm carrying a bunch of stuff. You know what I'm saying? So I am constantly just going, Jesse, slow down, you know? Um, and you guys usually see the movement portion of it. Generally, we move, stop, listen, move, stop, listen, move, stop, listen, but we're not going to have an hour long video of us just standing there going, didn't hear anything. So you're seeing the kinetic portions of it because people are always like, you guys need to slow down and listen. We do stop and listen, but Jesse's also a speed demon. And the more ground you cover, the more chances you have of something happening. So yeah, it's, it's a constant, you need to slow down, please. Chasing the talent is brutal, like was said before. Because Jesser goes, <clears throat> everyone has a butt from behind. <laughs> Um, I've got a couple in here on these last call, last yeah. call for alcohol ones. Michael M said, "Do y'all hear the answer back when Brohood was at LBL? I did the. If you're referring to the video that Barton put out, I did the enhancement on that video. So yes, I did hear it. Barton, Dale, times. Martin, and Ron Moorhead. Because so. I did the audio enhancement on that video. So yeah. yes, I heard it, and it was weird. I don't know what the heck that was because I had to hear it in my headphones." Um, like 500 times when I was doing the audio work on it. And it's weird. It's very weird. It didn't sound human to Foxes, me. Foxes, wildcats, cougars, all that. Those sound weird at night. Coyotes can sound weird at night. It doesn't sound like any it of those. It doesn't sound like that. And it's... whatever it was had a set of lungs, which makes me think if that was a fox, because somebody was trying to say it was a fox scream or screech owl was the other thing I heard. And I'm going... These are people who don't spend a lot of time in the woods who have heard that these animals make weird noises yeah. and they're just throwing this out to try to debunk it. Yeah, it was a weird, weird sound. <clears throat> um, I heard it a lot and I'll tell you, I it was weird every time I heard it. So, and after I got done and I was like, I said, come here, put the headphones on, give him Joe. And he goes, what the hell is that? that? Yep. Uh, Solja asks, have you ever heard the metallic noise Martin Gross has described hearing while out investigating? We've heard weird stuff we've heard some mechanical humming we have heard weird stuff we have not heard the sound that they described with the tom mesic case that martin groves heard everything like that if and when we ever hear that sound the cameras are probably going down on a tripod out of our hands and we're probably going back to back yeah um mm -hmm. I don't think there are very many people who have heard that sound up close have made it back to talk about it. Probably not. You, you, there were some Bigfoot researchers over the years who have reported picking that up on audio recorders that they've left out. And I've talked about that in the past because the, the, the rationale that they tried to come up with on what caused that was like comical sometimes. Um, <clears throat> we have not heard it. 
And I'm going to, people always go, what are you guys going to do when you come up on one of these things? Like a dog man, Bigfoot, whatever. We're going to try to film it. And we're going to try to get away as safely as possible. Um, and obviously you can have some contingency plans, but you can't plan for everything until you get into that situation. Yeah. And, but we still want to do it. I understand it's dangerous, but people do dangerous stuff because they feel called upon to do it or they feel like they're supposed to be doing it every day. Mountain climbing, hang gliding, jumping out of parachutes, you know, jumping out of parachutes. Jump. <laughs> I don't jump out of planes. I jump out of the parachute. That's where I take it to. You're so wild. I know. <laughs> so, um, you can only the, do that once. <laughs> the metallic sound is something that I don't, but it, what I'm saying is, is it's dangerous. We still want to experience it. We still want to try to document it. I don't know if I want, to be in a position to hear that sound personally. Maybe on a recorder we leave out, but I don't think I want to be out in the woods with you one night and we hear that and then we just go, here it is. <laughs> Do you know what I'm saying? So yeah. here it is. Now now we're in for it. Now, now this is going to be something that you you may not walk away from. Yeah. So um so yeah, no, not to that degree. Now we've heard other weird stuff. We've heard stuff that's we've heard mechanical humming, we've heard some other stuff, but it, that sound, the way it's been described, I think when we hear it, we're going to know it. We're going to go, that's it. Here it goes. So great question. So <clears throat> Hawk was asking if you've heard what sounds like a sheet of metal vibrating in the wind. Um, the audio we got of those two entities, there's this weird mechanical mm -hmm. humming. Mm -hmm. yeah. It can almost be described as that. Some of the old Bigfoot researchers talked about it sounded like a big piece of tin, like a like a metal roof, like a piece of tin roof being shaken. You know, you can shake it and get that metallic yeah. wobbly, but that a sharper. Um, so it is, some people have described it as like a metallic trap door shutting and then kind of like some after vibration and all that. Um, I don't know. We'll see. We'll see if it, we'll see if we ever come across it. Um, we're going to wrap up. We're going to wrap up folks. Thank you guys so much tonight. Thank you for the birthday wishes. Yeah. Thank you guys. Um, Joe's birthday is Saturday. So is it Saturday? Yeah. Nutslap says if he wins the Powerball, you have a new sponsor. And that is now legally binding. That is a legally binding contract. Um, if you win the Powerball and you attempt to back out of this, you will be hearing from our high powered attorneys. High, very high powered. Very high powered YouTube attorneys. Mm -hmm. So yes. We'll get a call. We'll call the YouTube. Kim says, back in the day, I'd be the audio visual guy. Actually, back in, I'd never had any interest in cameras or audio or anything like that at all. I mean, nothing at all. We're still learning camera stuff. Yeah. Um, I've actually got a, I'm starting school in the fall to go. I'm more familiar with like sound mechanics and like acoustics yeah. than I am like cameras right now from like the infrasound stuff. But um, this was not anything that either one of us had any. We were talking again to that photographer and that videographer guy, and he's mentioning stuff, and I'm like, I have no clue what you're talking about. What these lenses are, you yeah, know. Yeah, I like I said, I start school in the fall. I'm gonna go back to school um, to get some, do some classes, so I learn about all the equipment we're to using to be able to get better at um, doing this stuff. I'm kind of, I don't know what I don't know, so I need to fill in the gaps on my knowledge um, in terms of photography, filmmaking. Uh, editing all of that stuff. So I'm going back to school starting in the fall yeah. to do that. And that's just to get better. That's just like taking these survival courses. That's just like doing wilderness first aid. This is all part of what we do. And this is all what we do for this channel. So I'm going to start back at school and um, hopefully everything gets a lot better yeah. after I get better at it. Karen, thank so. you for that. Thank you every week for helping us out there. We greatly yes, appreciate absolutely. it. Absolutely. Thank you. So yeah. And that's the other thing too, is that we're going to keep trying to Improve. improve always get, keep improving. I'm gonna tell you right now, I think we're I hate this and I'm I, all fake like braggadocio, you know, and I'm just like, oh, just a couple of humble people. I can't wait. I think we're pretty damn good on a lot of the stuff at this we're point. Pretty good. Um, we're okay. I think at this point yeah. we could go out with any group in the world and hold our own. When I say any group in the world, if we got a call next week going, we want you guys to come to Skinwalker Ranch, yeah, bring your stuff, I would not. I think, the, I think I think that we, we could go there and we, we could we yeah. could contribute to pretty much anything at this point. That's not, I mean, it's it's been like six years of just adding on to the stuff we already knew, but now adding, refining, doing it in the field, add, refine, do it in the field, throw the stuff away that doesn't work. <clears throat> and like Martin says, if you ever hear the sound, run, run, run. And in the grand scheme of things, it's just getting started. You yeah. Know? Yeah. Um, Hawk had asked about the 
metal vibrating in the wind. What we heard was kind of a almost like a pulsing electronic mechanical sound. We've heard what sounded like a, an electronic voice one night and we drove ourselves crazy going through all of our equipment to make sure it wasn't something going battery low or something. That's not what it said, but um, we never found anything. We never know. And we've heard some different opinions um, of what that voice has said. It's on one of the videos. I can't remember which one, but ready to die. You're going to die. I have died. It's just something pretty, everything was pretty sinister that people heard. So Ellen uh, Smith asked, you guys have a day job? Yes. yes. Oh, yes. <laughs> oh, yes. We, we work a ton. Yeah, um, we work all the time. And we've, and for the past several years, every spare penny we had went into this project. It still does. But it was getting to the point where just two people, I mean, we still got to live, you know, we needed a place to live, you know, we have to eat. Um, we got to buy cat treats. Yeah, cat treats are expensive. Um, yeah. But we uh, had gotten to the point where we were just going, we've done all we can solo. Um, if we pick up more jobs, cause we both work a lot on like regular stuff. Um, we work a lot, um, to the normal dreaded day jobs. jobs. Well, so I, have I, night, love my day I have a night job, yeah, I love my day job. <laughs> but, um, we, uh, uh, yeah, we just got to the point where it was just beyond the cap capabilities of two people, no matter what they were doing to keep it running. Unless one of us hits the lottery. One of us hits the lottery. Wait, one of us? It's off the chain at that one point. One of us hits Yeah, the you guys are going to see stuff that like you never even thought possible. Somewhere. There will we won't we won't tell you, but there will be signs. There will be signs. That the will, helmet helicopter. Yeah, the helicopter. So, um, all right, guys, we're gonna wrap it up. Yeah, Thank guys. you guys so much, man. It was hum I, again very humbling tonight. Thank you so much for. Thank you guys. All the birthday wishes and everything like that. All part the of our world. Um, Keep your notifications on. We are going to try to do our first Grove experiment. Yeah. And not an experiment on Martin Groves. That's for next year. We start hooking Martin up to electrodes and giving him, you know, take Martin. these pills, Martin. Now stand <laughs> in this clearing on the OBL. Let's see what happens. We are going to do our first experiment at the Grove um, either this week or next week. Mm -hmm. uh, we are going to go out there and try different things at different times and see what responses we get. And we'll see what works, what doesn't work, what amplifies and draws an activity, what doesn't really have an effect at all. Yep. So we're going to start our mm -hmm. um, Grove experimentation series. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, we're going to do several experiments um, over the next couple weeks, months, where, yeah. when we come up with more experiments. So we have several already lined up that we're going to be doing, but we're going to be doing those as lives for members. So um, if you are a member of the channel, make sure you keep your notifications on. We'll let you know and uh, keep an eye out. We might be going live yeah. with an experiment very soon. And a lot of times we cannot let you know ahead of time because a lot of times we get out there and where we want to do it at and what we want to do we don't have enough signal to share it and then other times we're like we got signal let's go live so sometimes it just comes at you so um but if, if you miss it it'll always be available for you to view yeah um, on the members tab so all that all those if you if you just joined tonight um all of those old videos are available for you to catch yeah. up on so and um, like Moondog says, we need the support to bring the sugar. Let's get that Bigfoot bread. Anyway, um, but all right, guys, we're going to wrap it up. Thank you guys so much. Thank uh, you, guys. Keep your notifications on. Um, latest video is out. If you haven't had a chance to watch it, let us know your thoughts on it. Um, a couple of people have emailed us. I know Goshawk City emailed us. We are insanely behind on emails. I think that's like, we need like a thing that comes up insanely behind. Which in, it's, a lot of them have gone to spam. So we're, we're all over the damn place for it, man. We just keep in mind, we're two weirdos who never expected this to really appeal to anybody beyond us. So, yeah. um, and we, the field investigations take a lot of time. I am going to do a field investigation setup video and then a breakdown video I'm not going to do that. It's boring as hell. Why would anybody watch that? Anyway, let's wrap it up, folks. All right. Take guys, thank you all stuff. so much. Thank you, guys. I'm going to play the music we actually chose for the latest video. We really like that because it reminds me of some Conan the Barbarian Barium stuff. So I'm going to play that on the outro. Hope you guys have a great week. Take care of yourselves. Take care of each other. Stay safe out there. And we will be seeing y'all. Manana.